make this demo a little bit different, what I wanted to do is have Rachel drive and show you how really easy this is. And Rachel, you don't have a whole lot of IT experience, right? Uh, none. Actually, you have it's no fair to say IT none. experience. Okay, so no IT experience. Rachel's going to play the role of our VA, and I actually put this on her uh, like literally well, literally uh, 10 minutes ago. Yep. So first of all, if Rachel does this, let me, let me act as the administrator, and I'm going to configure this, Rachel. Give me one second here. So the first time you enter this wizard, it's going to present you with a, with a tool that looks a little bit like this. I'm, I'm going to get there after the fact. I go to Data Mining Plugin, enter Help. I want to get getting started. Again, you can get this plugin from Microsoft.com. I can also go to it's my virtual image, so Lord knows what we'll see here. I go to <laughs> SQL Server Data Mining.com. You'll find this and a whole bunch of other things on data mining. I always go to this little plug-in on the, on the right here for 2008. There's also 2005, one below that. And you'll see the plug-in right here. Download the add-in. That's the direct way of getting there. Okay. After I do that, it will open this wizard right here. Now, I'm gonna, this is the first time I'm installing this. So I'm going to say I want to use an existing instance of analysis services somewhere in my environment that I actually administer. I'll hit Next. Now, I'm basically done, but I, I want to click this one icon right here, this one hyperlink. This is going to open up the server administrator here. And the server administrator is going to walk me through configuring the server for the first time. I'll hit Next. I'm going to allow temporary mining models to be created. This is basically creating a temp DB for my users. I'll point to the server. I'll point to the, the, uh, the database there. I'm going to use, I already have the database created, so I'll select that again. Hit Next. I'll add the accounts that I want to have access to this, this database, and hit finish. That's all there is to configuring as a server administrator. You do this one time per server, and the clients are already done. Now, from a client perspective, what they'll have to do, let me, let me delete this, there we go. What Rachel would have to do the first time is when she goes to the, oh, let me open up a, a, a quick data set here. What she'll, this is actually the data set that actually comes with the product. So what she'll do is she'll go to Analyze, and she'll need to create a connection to my server. So I'm going to go to the local connection, and I'm driving this time. I'll type in localhost, and I'll point to my database. There it is, and hit OK, and close. So now that actually retains itself, so I never have to do that again. So Rachel, I, I just have to do it one time, and they're all set. Now this okay. data set we're looking at right here is, is a data set that comes with the plugin. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to that first work, worksheet that you see down there called Table Analysis to a Tool Sample down below. That'll work uh -huh. as well. You click on the hyperlink. And it's showing us a whole bunch of bike buyer data. These are customers that actually purchased products from us in the past. And if you slide all the way to the right, using your cursor or whatever you want to use, uh, your mouse or your cursor, you'll see the bike, bike, bike flag there of purchased bike, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. So each of one of these customers is a case. This customer right here, did this customer actually purchase a product or not? And we're seeing all the metadata about this customer. They're 42 years old and so on and so on and so on. So the question from Dallas here again, do the temporary mining models created by an, uh, uh, an administrator after the structure? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the database is actually created by the, administ by, by the administrator and then the mining models are going to be created by the users in that database, Dallas. Great question. All right, the question here is, is uh, supported by 64-bit Excel yet? Uh, this is from Jeff. Uh, Jeff, it's not supported by 64-bit Excel, Office 2010 specifically yet. However, it is coming very, very soon, very soon. So I can't tell you when yet. Uh, I'm still under NDA that, but they are working on that. So you, sh you should see a development coming up, coming out of that in the next uh, very foreseeable future. All right, so now, Rachel, we want to do some data mining. Now, typically that would mean we have to load the database and we have to open up Visual Studio Project and kind of walk through this wizard to make this happen. Mm -hmm. But in Rachel's case, what she wants to do is she's a, she's a business analyst or a marketing person, go figure. Mm -hmm. So we want to go select somewhere. Notice there's no Analyze tab up top. In the ribbon right. that is. So when she selects somewhere inside this Excel table, on any cell in that table, an Analyze tab opens up. Ooh. When she clicks that Analyze ribbon, we have a whole bunch of data mining algorithms that we can use. So, for example, I want to find out what the key influencers to somebody purchasing a product versus not purchasing a product. So when she clicks on that, she's going to look at uh, what, what she's trying to figure out right now, and she wants to see what is actually influencing somebody purchasing a product. So, Rachel, if you hit the drop-down box where it says ID right there, 
the behavior we want to see is purchased bike. So what is going to influence somebody purchasing a bike? When she hits run, that's all there is to it. What's actually happening behind the scenes is it loaded that analysis versus temporary database that we created. It FTP or ETL the data in. After it ETL the data in, it created a mining model, queried the mining model, and then returned these results. So Rachel, if you would hit add report and then close, what this is telling us right now is what's influencing somebody purchasing a product versus not purchasing a product. So we can see here what's, what's, what's really weighing somebody's decision is, first of all, how many cars they have. If they have two cars, they're really not going to buy a product probably. But if they have zero cars, they probably need that bike that we're selling. If they're single, they probably you know, still care about their health and all that, so they probably want a bike. Uh, if they have uh, they're in the Pacific, they're more likely to buy a product also. So you can see a blow-by-blow -blow decision on why they're buying products from us. This, just, this uh, tab right here is mostly meant for the business analyst. So let's go back to that first tab again, the table analysis uh, workbook down below there, Rachel. There you go. We're going to go back there a few times here. Now our next decision we want to say is, well, what are, where are our groups of customers? Who is, you know, what, which customers kind of feel the same? Now this is used for fraud detection many times. So if Rachel were to hit detect categories this time, up top, Oh, up top there, there you go. Yep. You're doing fine, Rachel. <laughs> is this your first time doing this? It is. Everyone keeps threatening, but you're the only one who actually did it to me. Ah, okay, cool. Look at you. I'm going to have to pay attention to this workshop. This I know. Working. So this time, Rachel's trying to find out which one of these customers really is, is feeling the same. Which, which, which customer should I lump into into marketing groups, perhaps. This is a marketing question or a fraud, de fraud detection question. So, in other words, I want to find out which are, which are credit worthy and which are not, perhaps. Or, if Rachel's case, she's going to send the same kind of marketing message to different kinds of categories of customers. So, if she hits run right now, let's check this out. It's pretty cool, though, isn't it, Rachel? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Uh, I'm feeling more and more confident right now with the automated plugin for Excel. <laughs> All right, there we go. So look, there we go. We found these customers, uh, these, these groups of customers, and about equal, right? 189 in category one. And as you look down there, category one are Europeans that make less than thirty-nine thousand dollars. They're manual labor or clinical or clerical people, and they have zero to one miles uh, they travel to work every day. So this is a group of people. So what, what Rachel can do now is she can actually type in a category one on the top there. She can actually type in in the gray there, right below there. You go. You're actually right in the right mouse area. Right there here. I'll kind of move it. I'll move it right there. There you okay. go. Good. She can type in like Europeans or Europe or whatever she wants. She's done some some analytical studies now, and she wants to send all this group of people the same kind of email and spam. So Rachel, can type in like Europeans or whatever you want to call these people. Okay, good enough. And when she hits enter. It changes throughout the rest of the data sets. Notice down below now, Europeans are now classified there as well.